not just as a man, but as people of God here today. So, Father God, give insight, wisdom, and revelation knowledge to all these people that they may hear, see, and understand the words of my mouth that come from my heart, from your Holy Spirit. And I thank you for that now. In Jesus' name, and all the redeemed said, amen. In Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17 in the NIV, just listen to me, if you would. I feel that preaching has been more powerful the past few weeks than teaching. So just kind of pay attention directly to what I'm saying, at it, saying so you can be uh, in line. The Bible says this, the Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves. And then in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, it says this. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and violent men take it by force. Now, this is one of my favorite scriptures. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. But it, it's quite dangerous, and some, a lot of times it's, it's not acceptable to most Christians today. The fact is, most people, and this is not a bad thing, would rather talk about peace, love, forgiveness, and mercy. And there's nothing wrong with those things unless you leave out the other. Amen. You see, there's nothing wrong with peach cobbler unless that's all you eat. If that's all you're going to do, you're going to gain a lot of weight, and you're going to be very ups upset with yourself as you look in the mirror every day. Say amen. I think there's a tremendous deficit of, of testosterone that's in the body of Christ. Where are the men? Where are all the men? Where are all the men of God, the people of God that are not ashamed? Now, some people are uncomfortable with this kind of series that I'm going to teach in the next few weeks here, but it's important. There's a problem in the church today. The fact is this. In the average church, in the average town, men are outnumbered by women two to one. In the mind of the average man, the church is where you go and you learn how to be nice. And I believe the reason for this that is we have been misconstrued in a lot of ways. The reason why I believe that the boys at a little age put on uh, Batman costumes and Spider-Man costumes is that they want to grow up and they want to be a little good and dangerous in their life. It's something in our DNA, man, something that God has created us to be bold and, and to be strong, that we would be what God has, warriors for him. I believe that the whole problem comes sometimes as the way the media has portrayed Jesus Christ. A lot of times they portray him in, in one aspect, but he's the one that said this, violent men take it by force. He is known in the Old Testament as a warrior God. You don't hear much of that. Jesus actually was raised in the carpentry business. And I don't know any carpenter that was really weak. He had rough, calloused hands, a strong back, and big biceps, and he knew how to work. A hard day. And let me just tell you, they didn't have power saws and power tools in those days either. They did it by hand. And he was a, a man's man. He was, and a, a lot of times he got angry too. Did you know Jesus got angry? One day he got angry at the synagogue leaders, and he, he got a whip and put it together, and he whipped everybody out of the temple because they were doing things wrong. That doesn't sound like a weak person to me. That sounds like somebody that was strong. In many aspects, that's what the media, though, has portrayed him as someone passive, someone free-spirited, and sad to say, even a feminine manner in some ways. And we don't need to have that in any way. Hallelujah. Now, I don't doubt that Jesus was kind in general, but that's not all he was. He was very stern and very direct and very much a man's man. Let me ask you a question. How do you tell people today that because Jesus was nice, that's why he got crucified? There had to be more to it than just being a nice guy. Let me say, the government never wants to put to death a Mr. Rogers personality. Won't you be my neighbor, guys? He was more than that. How many believe that Jesus was more than that? The fact is that the, there is more to Jesus than is portrayed by the media today. To most people, God is either distant or weak. If you talk to a lot of people out in the world that don't come to church, they look at God as distant. I'm not talking about you who've been raised in the churches, man. Thank God for you. But for those who have been outside the church and have no real proper portrayal or understanding or have been manipulated by media. They look at the church as weak. They look at Jesus as weak, and they look at us as weak. But that's not true. Let me just say that there's more to that than this. Hallelujah. So we need to understand Jesus in, is, is a meek person, but there's more to it than that. Hallelujah. You see, he's not just a nice guy. He's not Mr. Rogers with a beard. 
He's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Can you say amen? So the question today I want to ask you is this. As a man and as a believer in Christ, as a believer in God, how do you see Jesus? And how does he influence you as a man? My answer is that he is both strong and passionate, but a man's man and, and also compassionate towards other people. He was gracious. One time in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, it tells us how Jesus healed this cripple, crippled woman. It was the Sabbath day. Now, if you knew anything about Judaism, they, they, they separated sat, uh, the Sabbath as a separate holy day, and you didn't do anything. And the Pharisees got real bent out of shape one day when Jesus healed a woman on the Sabbath day. Why? Here's the thing you need to understand as a man. Jesus always did the things that were right. He would always do things that were right. Now listen to this. Just listen to me. This is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. It's in a New Living Translation, so it will sound a little different, but I'll get the, pes the, the message across to you. Verse 10 says this. On the Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he saw a woman had been crippled by an evil spirit. And it says she had been bent over for 18 years, uh, years and was unable to stand up. Walking around like this for 18 years, been pain and agony. And when he saw her, he called her over and he said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Now what happened then was the leader of the synagogue got indignant that Jesus actually healed on the Sabbath day. And he said this, there's six days in a week for work. And, and he said to the crowd, and he says, come here and be healed on those other days, not the Sabbath. Now here's what Jesus did. He did what was right. He yells out, he says, you hypocrite, in front of everybody. This was the religious leader of the, of the synagogue. It would be like somebody coming up and standing up against me right now and say, you hypocrite, right in front of all of you else. He said, you hypocrite. He said, each of you work on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox and your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it to water? This dear woman, he points to the woman, he says, a, a daughter of Abraham has been in bondage by Satan for 18 long, stinking years. How <laughs> we know what I'm talking about? Isn't it right for her to be released on the Sabbath day? And, this, and it says, finally, this shamed the, his enemies. This shamed his, what? Enemies. Religion. But all the people rejoiced in the wonderful things that he did. Now, he was not afraid to stand up and do what was right. How about you as men? How about you as Christians? How many need to know that you don't need to be afraid to do what is right? It's not, it takes boldness to stand up and declare that you're a Christian today. It takes boldness to stand up and do what is right. It takes boldness to stand up and say, I'm going to raise, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It takes a true man to do that. It takes someone with integrity, with backbone, that's strong, that's not afraid to, to stand in the face of adversity and look that face in adversity with boldness and say, you know what, I'm going to stand with God whether anybody else does or not. Hallelujah. You see, God is a warrior. He's a warrior God. In Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17 in the NIV, and I know, New International for Translation, it says this, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. Now let me ask you a question. Is the Lord always a nice guy? Well, I wondered if the Egyptians who kept Israel under bondage for 400 years thought he was nice. They had plagues and they had pestilence and the death of their firstborn. Uh, do you remember Samson? The strongest man supposedly who ever lived. And it says he killed a lion with his bare hands, and he kills a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey or a donkey. Amen. Amen. Now, here's what the Bible says. Did you ever notice this? The Bible says that all these things happen when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. That doesn't sound like a weak God. And then think about these things. This all happened under the anointing. Now, I'm not suggesting that we go around and be bullies for God. I'm not suggesting that we even be sorryful or even empathetic towards our enemies. But I would say that we should be bold enough to stand up for what is right in the name of the Lord. Stand up for what is true. Stand up for what the Bible says, even if it's not politically correct. 
We live in a day where political correctness is, is law, but not in the house of the Lord and for those who believe in God. Can you say amen? Politically correct is following the word of God for us in Jesus' name. That's why they make fun of us. That's why they look at us and scorn us. That's why the world, you see, if the world loves you, then something is wrong. Now, I'm not advocating a martyr spirit or of any kind, but we need to stand up for what is true. How many would agree? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I believe that. The Bible is clear that Jesus was powerful man on earth and that men who become like him will become warriors for their families, for their church, and for the kingdom. I believe that with all my... Jesus never shied away from his calling or purpose. Never. In the Garden of Gethsemane, remember when they came after him? They came after... The ones that came after him were thugs. Notice when they came after him. They came after him in the middle of the night. Why didn't they do it in the daytime? Why didn't they do, why didn't they do it in the town? I'll tell you why. They were afraid of Jesus. They were afraid of the power that he demonstrated. They were afraid because they knew something was special upon this person, and they were cowards. Listen to John chapter 14, 18, verses 4 through 8. Listen to what it says. Jesus, they came out to him. Judas was there, leading the pack, ready to betray Jesus. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen, went out and asked them, What is it you want? Who do you want? Jesus of Nazareth replied, replied, I am he. I want Jesus, they said. And Jesus said, I am he. And all of a sudden, the Judas traitor was there next to him. And again, they fell back under the power of God because when he said, I am he, the Bible teaches us that when God said that, when Jesus said that, the power of God was released and they fell back under the power of God. And they said again, he asked them, who are you searching for? And Jesus said, I'm he. You know, you know, sometimes we look at Jesus as being meek. But Jesus was very brave in a situation. He could have stood out and said, listen, I'm not him. I'm hiding and I'm going to run and I'm going to go away. But listen, he was brave enough. And you know what he said? Don't take anything out on these guys. Take me. So he looked at that crowd and he was bold enough to go into a situation and he was not afraid. He was a man who knew his principles and stood for his principles and followed his principles. And I believe that's what we need to do as men of God as well. Jesus was and always was and will be a warrior. While he was on earth, he, he moved as a man. You know, the Bible even teaches when he comes back, he'll come back as a warrior. He'll be riding on a white horse, it says. It tells us that his robe will be dipped in blood. He'll t it tells us that he has a two-edged sword in his hand. That's a person ready for battle. We knew him as a meek person before, but he not, he's not going to be coming as that weak person. He's going to be coming as a warrior the next time around. Hallelujah. And I believe he's coming very soon. How many believe Jesus is coming soon? Hallelujah. I believe it all my heart. In fact, most people mistake this. They mistake meekness with weakness. Say, meekness is not weakness. Say it again. Meekness is not weakness. One of the most powerful statements they ever said about Jesus and anybody in the Bible was that he was meek. Meek me means this. It's power under control. It means that the person has control of his, of his facilities, of control of his mind, his emotions, his strength. He's able to control it and focus it in the right way. Jesus, while on the cross, had every power available to get him down off the cross. But because of his meekness, power under control, he kept himself on the cross for you and I. Because he loved you and I so much, he stood to what was right and hang there and hung there for you and I. As men of God, we need to do sometimes, even in adverse situations, we need to stick out and stay through to God, what God has called us to be and be men and people of God. I believe that with all my heart. Jesus did what was right. Men need to do what is right. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. See, warriors always come through. When you look at warriors, you look, how many like some neat war movies from here? I mean, anybody see a neat war movie and they see the enemy come up? That, that real hero is that one who comes through. He denies himself even in the face of death. 
And he comes through victorious. He comes through in the end, and it makes the whole movie exciting. Well, Jesus makes our life exciting because he came through. The fathers who stand firm, when they do what is right, they'll come through. I know for my children, after years of raising them, sometimes I had to do things, and uh, they didn't like it at a time. How many have ever done that with their children? But years later, they'll come back to me, and they'll say, Daddy, thank you for being strict on me when I was younger. Thank you for making me work and pay for my gas and my insurance. Can you say amen? <laughs> I'll buy the car. You buy the gas and the insurance. <laughs> but I made him do it to teach him principles. I make him come to church. Listen to what I just said. I make them come to church. Every Sunday, I, I, I tell my girls, get up. Now, Angela and Janice are gone now and married. Now they're here. Thank God. And we thank God. But you've got to train them to do that. You've got to be stern to do that. You've got to be, sometimes you're not their friend. Let me just tell you, you're not put, put there to be their friend. You're put there to be your, the daddy. <laughs> Amen? I know... Benny, I know you have a great family in Jesus' name, and you've been a great daddy, example of that, because all your girls are in church, they love God, and they're doing well. Can you give God praise for that, too? And Brother Mike, what a wonderful testimony, and Jack, and all you fathers, it's so important, because you are coming through, and that's the principle of a warrior. They come through. They come through and do what is right, even in the midst of problems, and, and when you have to stand alone, and no one likes you. And even sometimes your wife would question what you do. But thank God I have a beautiful wife that always stands with me in everything I do. And thank God I was smart enough to say that after I said that before. Amen. <laughs> Warriors always come through. <laughs> I'm convinced that God wants you to live by faith more than he wants you to be comfortable. You hear me? I believe he wants you to live more by faith, more than just being comfortable. You know, a lot of people let things slide. Let it go. They have that stick their head in the sand mentality. They're, they don't want to address the issue. But God wants us to live by faith. What does that mean? Follow the word of God and do it. Faith means you follow the word of God and do it. Say this. Faith means follow the word of God and do it. Amen. Now, he expects us to live by faith in him, in his word, in all situations. And sometimes those situations are scary. Sometimes as a father, you're going to be scared. Every hero will tell you they were scared while they were doing what they were doing. But something kicked in. And I'll tell you right now, when the Spirit of the Lord kicks in your life, you can face death. You can face poverty. You can face sickness. You can face anything that you would stand your ground. I don't know about you, but I want a righteous nation to rise up here today, a people of God to get us back where we need to go with God. Hallelujah. And it's going to take men, and it's going to take thank God for you women. You've been carrying the torch and you've been doing a great job, and I applaud you as well. But together, we can do more. Hallelujah. Together, we can go further. Together, we can go deeper. Together, we can go higher. And together, we can go wider for the kingdom of God. You see, God wants us to come through. Hallelujah. In the end, all of God's warriors come through. For example, the children of Israel were pinned against the Red Sea. No way out. Here they had Pharaoh and all the army of Egypt coming up against them. There was no way out. They were able to stand there, but they were going forth as Moses led them as a man of God, and they came to a place where there was no way out. What happened? God comes through. God shows up. There's another story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They would not bow. And because of that, they were thrown into what is known as a fiery furnace. It was heated up seven times, so much so that the guys that threw them into the furnace, they were killed by, the, by, the, uh, by that blazing fire that came from, the, from those ovens at that time. What happened? God comes through. There is another man standing in the midst of them. 
Let me just tell you something. When you're standing alone and you're standing with God, you're not standing alone. You're standing with God. That's right. God will always be, if God be for me, who can be against me? What happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? God shows up. God shows up. And Jesus, look at Jesus. A whole mob come up against him. Everybody that was religious hated him. They wanted to kill him from day one. And they got the mob together. They got, they got the, the, the Romans to come up against him as well. And they, they were crucifying him. They openly murdered Jesus. They openly murdered him. Here we have the hope of all the universe now dead. What happens? When Jesus was, af- was not afraid to do what was right, guess what happened? God shows up. Resurrected on the third day. Now alive for more. Jesus said to, to, uh, to one of the disciples, handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and blood, bone as you see I have. Jesus, guess what? Is alive right now because he comes through as a warrior for us. Hallelujah. And then I love this one. Against the, ki- the killer, the uh, Goliath of the giant, probably about eight or nine feet tall. I don't know about you, but they had this little freckle-faced little guy named David, about 17 years old. All he had was a sling. And let me just tell you something. He was good at it, too. And he had enough courage to go out there. You, came, you come up against me with a sword and spear, but I come up against you in the name of the Lord. Man, there's nothing more powerful than the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord represents the authority of the Lord. The name of the Lord represents the power of God. The name of the Lord represents the strength of God. And here was a little boy acting like a man of God. And in the face of that, guess what happened? God shows up. He cuts the head off that giant, runs around under the power of God so much that he couldn't stop. And all the Philistines ran in fear. Let me just tell you something. When the enemy comes against you one way, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a spirit against it, and they'll run in every way. God wants you to know if God be for you, who can be against you? Hmm. Every one of us need to be bold. Every one of us need to stand firm in what is right. And I want to stay and say here today that every one of you here as men, and even as people, you're warriors. You're warriors of God. Say this out loud. I am a warrior of God, I will act like it and not be afraid. That's important for you to know. I believe that God is here today. How about you? I want to have the musicians come up at this time in Jesus' name. I want to give an opportunity for you to come to the things of God. See, a true man, a true woman of God will stand up for what is right. How many believe that? And as a sign of a true man of God here today, I want you to know that if you don't stand with God, then that's a good sign that you are weak in your heart. God wants you to stand with him. And he'll give you the strength. He'll give you the strength to stand in this day and start doing what is right. Men, let me just tell you something. Come to church. Bring your family to church. Make church and God a priority in your life. Make it so. Let me just tell you this. Of all the kind of people I know that are successful, the ones that come to church on a consistent basis are the ones that last the longest. Why that? Because when you come to the house of God, you're making a decision. I'm going to follow the Lord. I might be tired, I might be weak, but I'm going to also get involved. I want my family to know that I'm an example of Jesus, and I'm going to do what he says. With every head bowed and every high closed, here's the, the real question. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him as your Lord? Have you been drifting or falling away? Well, here's an opportunity to make that right, a true believer will stand up for what is right. A person here today that if you're searching in your heart, this is a wonderful opportunity to say, you know, Jesus, I don't know all about this stuff, but I want to make a decision. I want to follow you and do what is right. I want to come through. True warriors will always come through in Jesus' name. 
With every head bowed, with every eye closed, I want to say, Pastor John, I want to get closer to God. I want him as my Savior and my Lord. I want, I want everybody to know. I want him to know that I'm not ashamed to know Jesus. Lift your hand if that's you here today. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. Yes, amen. 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 I see those hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.